Hey guys, today I will show you how to use zebra dry plates. After skipping the video last week due to so many orders I got of zebra dry plates and holders, I'm just slowly starting to dig myself out of all the handwork that needs to be done. Don't get me wrong, I really love my job and I'm super happy that I can share the enthusiasm of shooting dry plates through the products I produce. And uh, since there is more and more zebra shooters out there, I've decided to make uh, some sort of a video guide on uh, how to use and how to work with zebra plates. I would like to answer the most frequent questions I get on a daily basis regarding loading, exposing, developing the plates and so on. Tips and tricks I'm about to show you can be applied and used with pretty much any dry plate out there, no matter whether you bought one or you coated them on your own. Like I said in the beginning, I will be working with standard zebra 4x5 grad dry plates that are coated with uh, ultra fine grain ISO2 silver gelatin emulsion and I will load them into Zebra 4x5 dual plate holder if you'd like to give them a try they are both available in my Etsy store which is linked down in the description below in order for the plates to arrive in one piece I securely pack them inside this box so yeah let's open it up to see what's inside once you open the package, unwrap the protective bubble foil and voila, this is the box of Zebra dry plates that includes basic information regarding size and standard developing procedure on the front and the rear side. Make sure that from here on you open the box on the red safe lights or inside a changing bag. Take a knife or scissors and cut the wrapping sticker like this. Once you open the box, you will notice that plates are further protected from light damage with a plastic dark back, just like we are used to with sheet film or paper. Carefully remove the sticker seal and uh, let's peek inside. As you can see, the plates are stacked inside and each one of them is wrapped in an acid-free paper to protect the emulsion and the dark back from sharp glass edges. Since the paper is very smooth, individual plate can easily be pulled out. And uh, this brings us to the first question. Now to the most frequent question I get, which side is coated with emulsion? Like it says on the packaging, the plate is wrapped emulsion side down, laying flat with the paper. So when you unwrap and flip the plate around, this is the emulsion side. Otherwise, if you are working under red safe lights, you can instantly tell which is the mate emulsion side and which is the reflective glass side. And please always handle the plate by the edges. One extra tip, don't throw the wrapping paper away as it can serve as a protective wrapping for the final negative image. Once you have the plate in your hands, it's time to load it into the holder. I'm using a new Zebra dual plate holder, so all I do is pull the dark slide out, slide the plate into the slots, emulsion side facing up, close the flap and push the dark slide back in. Now that you have your plate securely loaded inside the holder, protected from the light, you can take it anywhere, from the forest, to the mountains, to the seaside, to the moon. Okay, I think I went a bit too far here, but if you have any shots of the crater, send me some. For real, the main advantage of dry plates is that you can carry them pretty much everywhere, besides underwater, and in extremely hot environments with temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius, where you can risk the emulsion melting off. Zebra ISO2 glass dry plates are sensitive to blue, violet and ultraviolet light just like any other primitive silver gelatin emulsion. This means that the emulsion is seeing more than your own eyes can see and the biggest factor here is UV light that can uh, vary from uh, time of the day, time of the year, altitude, weather conditions and so on. Let's go through some examples just to give you an idea. If you shoot indoors, you will probably have to add between 3 or even up to 5 stops to compensate for the absence of UV light. When shooting at noon on a summer day when the amount of UV is the highest, these plates gain a lot of speed and can be rated even up to ISO 5. If you are shooting a seascape or sky, keep in mind that they both reflect a lot of blue light, meaning you can take a few steps from the general ISO 2 rating. When shooting with zebra dry plates you should always keep that in mind and it will definitely take some practice and a few failed attempts but the general ISO 2 rating should always give you the result no matter the circumstances. And the good news is that you can develop these plates by inspection under red safe lights and safe over or under exposed shots by altering the developing time. 
What about reciprocity failure? I get this question very often as it plays a very big role in uh, film photography but not so much with dry plates because they are coated with uh, ultra fine grain emulsion. The reciprocity failure is uh, not noticeable up to one minute of exposure. Only when your exposure time is running over a minute you should account in for the reciprocity failure by adding 50% to the initial exposure. So if our exposure is one minute uh, we would add 50% and our new exposure time would be 1 minute and 30 seconds and if your exposure time is running over 2 minutes or more you should be doubling your exposure time so initial 2 minutes plus 100% is 4 minutes Since a light meter can only detect visible spectrum it won't give you a 100% correct exposure every time but it can help you a lot to give you a general idea of what the exposure might be. I would recommend you to take a general metering of the subject you would like to shoot. Most of the time I'm working with an app called Light Meter Free. I might make a separate video covering my metering technique if any of you is interested. Let me know in the comments below. Now all you have to do is press the shutter and uh, keep things still. The best way to develop zebra dry plates is by inspection under red safe lights like this. But if you don't have access to a dark room, you can also develop them in a modified developing tank such as the one from Starman Press. Key to successfully process dry plates is in the temperature which should be constant throughout the whole process. With batch 100 I started adding more hardener to zebra dry plates in order to make them more resilient to developing. But in any case I recommend you to keep all the temperatures at around 20 degrees Celsius. To develop the plate I strongly recommend you to use my favorite Kodak KC110 but any other solvent fine grain uh, developer that's usually used for paper will work just as well. I've had great success with developers like uh, Ilford PQ, Dictol or D76. Developers like Rodinal or T-Max turned out to be too aggressive for the emulsion so I strongly recommend you to use something else instead. Let's turn off the lights and develop one plate together using Koda KC110 Dilution B. Under red safe lights take the plate out of the holder and slide it into the developer starting a 5 minute timer. I agitate constantly for the first 30 seconds and enjoy the magical moment of image appearing on glass. After the initial 30 seconds I agitate for 5 seconds every half a minute. When the timer runs out, I pull the plate out of the developer and slide it into the water bath for a minute, agitating constantly. To make the image permanent, it needs to be fixed. I always fix by inspection for around 5 minutes or until all the milky areas are completely gone. This one needs a bit more. Last processing step is getting rid of the fixer. I recommend washing the plate for at least 10 minutes in running tap water. When the plate is washed, let it dry in a well ventilated room for at least 12 hours. There are quite a few options for getting a positive image out of a negative glass dry plate. The most common option nowadays is scanning the plate on a flatbed scanner. You can slide the negative into the enlarger if it can accept 4x5 format and uh, make a proper darkroom print. Next one on the list is contact printing which I often like to do. You can contact print using direct alternative printing techniques such as salt print, cyanotype, palladium and so on or just use a plain photographic paper. This technique usually works better with bigger sized negatives using zebra 5x7 or 8x10 plates. And the last but not least is digitalizing the negative using a light box, digital camera and Photoshop to invert the colors. Since I'm still saving for a proper scanner this is a technique I use very often. Guys don't forget to share your beautiful images on social media using hashtag zebra dry plates. There you go this is the basic procedure for working with standard zebra glass dry plates. Of course if you have previous experience with shooting dry plates 
I strongly encourage you to experiment and to adapt the procedure to meet your wishes. But for those who are new to dry plate photography, I think that this is a good starting point. In case you missed, if you'd like to get your own Zebra Glass dry plates or the new Zebra Dual Glass dry plate holder, they are available in my uh, Lost Light Art Etsy store, which is linked in the description below. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below or uh, contact me through email, Facebook, Instagram. I'm always happy to help. To conclude this video, I'd like to thank you for becoming a part of Zebra Family. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. It really means a lot. I wish everybody to stay safe and uh, catch you guys in the next one. Bye!